All right. I uh, was just talking about how you kind of have to um, keep an eye out for everything, and when you're interviewing people, be willing to, to adapt. But the case is, is what I'm wanting to kind of emphasize is do your research, come up with a lot of questions beforehand, but always be watching, always be observing, and always be um, willing to adapt. The other thing I would say is ask stupid questions. Don't be afraid to ask stupid questions. There's nothing wrong with a stupid question here and there. Even though you may know, think you know the answer, the problem is, is you may not. And so just ask stupid questions. You can kind of do it nonchalantly, like, so that is this way or something. I mean, you know, if you might want to do it, but don't be afraid. Don't think your questions are stupid. Just ask them. If the person calls them stupid, then just be like, okay, well, you're a jerk. And just burn them when you're, no, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I shouldn't tell you to burn them when they write the story. But, you know, I will say that, you know, I mean, I want you to be aware of this. I mean, you know, I'm not saying burn people because, you know, the, if, but if people are jerks, I wouldn't be afraid to put that in the story. If somebody's just a literal jerk to you and they're there and you're trying to do a story for them, I would have no problem making clear in the story that the person's a jerk. I mean, you know, they're opening a new restaurant and they want to get mad at you because you asked them some question they thought was stupid. Well, you know, I wouldn't be afraid to, to burn them. You know, I mean... I guess that's just me. I mean, I, I've told you, you know, this a little bit of an ego business and writers oftentimes have egos. There's nothing, you know, I mean, I guess part of me is just saying, you know, I mean, it, it's an ethical issue. I mean, I wouldn't burn them just to burn them. But I mean, if they're really rude and they're really rude, then that might be worth doing. Remember, not worth doing, but it might be something to at least keep in mind. Now, when I say burn them, I'm not saying like just destroy them and libel, you know, you know, don't just, you know, just go after them, but rather, you know, be accurate, you know, I mean, be accurate in your report and don't be flattering, don't be overly generous to them, um, which is something you should be cautious about anyway, but, you know, you know, just being aware and being willing to, you know, go out and get a little bit more information and be willing to, you know, find out, you know, if this person is really a good person or not. I mean, the willingness to, to, to check that out and not just give them a pass as we oftentimes do. Um, so, but I say all that with the statement, with the following statement that, um, you know, that most people won't be rude. And if you, all your questions are stupid, then that's a whole other thing. But I would just say, don't think your questions are stupid. I would say if you go out and ask a dozen stupid questions, uh, every story It'll be a year before anybody insults you about it. And that's why I'm saying if they do, then you know that, you know, most people are there being interviewed by a media person. They're kind of just keeping their tongue. Uh, and so if they don't, then one does have to wonder about the person. So as far as tough questions, um, I want to save this point. This is a very important point. Always save any tough questions you have for the end of the interview. Why? couple of reasons. First of all, if you have like a timed interview and you're going to be doing it for TV, um, one of the things is, is if you have a timed interview you're going to be doing for TV and you need 15 minutes, you ask a couple of tough questions, the person gets mad, they leave, you don't have any 15 minute interview, right? But if you save it for the end, you may have 15, 20, 30, maybe you have an hour's worth of material, you're going to be editing it down, and now you've got the questions. Same thing for print and other things. You can get all the information you want, and then you save the tough questions for the end. The other thing I'd say about blaming is, is you know, so don't, don't, you know, if you have a lot of questions, like an interview with somebody like the mayor, and you want to ask him about allegations against him, ask him about his progress, ask him about what he's most proud of, ask him about why he went into office, ask him all kinds of questions. But then save for the end those tough questions about, you know, the corruption and the, you know, the, the charges that are pending against him or her. The other thing is blame others. Say, well, some people have said, you know, don't make it you saying it. Say, some people have said, or other people have said. And the other thing I would do is I would say, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't ask this. You know, as a journalist, I have to ask you this. As, you know, this, I have to ask you that. Those are ways of kind of deflecting it and making it where it's not you personally attacking them and asking questions that they don't want to answer. And I bring this up to say, always save those for the end and kind of try to distance yourself a little bit from those because part of it is the reality that you are a journalist. You are having to ask tough questions and interview people about tough topics and you need to be able to realize that, you know, you're just doing your job. 
Now, I bring that up, and I kind of want to use this. And, and lately, uh, one of the things that's been in the news is Bill Cosby. There have been these allegations of uh, rape that have resurfaced. And as an example of this, uh, there was an interview he did with NPR. He and his wife were talking about a uh, set of, uh, of art they had given, and they were doing an interview to the National Museum of African Art uh, with the Smithsonian. And they were being interviewed by NPR Scott Simon about the collection. And he went ahead and he did the entire interview and he asked them all the questions about it. And then at the very end of the interview, he said, he, the, the reporter went ahead and raised a couple of questions about these rape allegations that had come up. And so, um, one of the things I, I do is I would say, you know, um, it, I, I might, I'll try to find it here and I'll play that last little bit here. But, you know, at the very end, the reporter says, and, uh, you know, Bill Cosby's asked him all about this museum. He says, Bill Cosby says, the way they're juxtaposed will certainly give that as opposed to your usual museum setups. And he's sort of talking about the art. And then Simon says, towards the very end of his interview, he says, um, this question gives me no pleasure, Mr. Cosby. There have been some serious allegations raised about you in recent days. You're shaking your head no. I'm in the news business. I have to ask the question, do you have any response to those charges? There's a long pause, and he says, shaking your head no. There are people who love, uh, who love you who might like to hear from you about this. I want to give you that chance. All right, Camille and Bill Cosby. They have lent 62 pieces from the collection of African and African-American artists to create an exhibit called Conversation, blah, blah, blah. And then his wife says, thank you. They go, he kind of spills through the re rehashing information. But the whole point of that is, is they have this and they've shown it on video and he's just sitting there stone-faced refusing to answer the questions and he's asking it. But the key is he got through the interview, he did it, and then he saved those tough questions for the end. The other thing he did is he did exactly what the textbook response is. He deferred the blame. He said, look, it gives me no pleasure to ask this, but I am in the news business. It's my job. I have to ask you. Maybe some people want to know. Maybe people who like you. Do you want to say something? So he's still trying to get it on the record. He's not completely passing on it. He is pushing him to give the answer, but in the end, he isn't, um, he isn't, how should I say, he isn't, um, you know, he isn't taking the blame. He isn't putting it right out there. He didn't start the interview with this. He didn't say, I want to know. He said, people want to know. He's still being put, he's still pushing for an answer, but he's not being, uh, making himself be a struggle between him and his interviewee.